everybody. Welcome back to Erndale's. Chip and I are here in the living room today because my studio is a hot mess. I cannot take you there. And Chip, you be quiet. So I'll do the preliminaries first. Um, I'm Dale. This is my channel, Erndale's, where I talk about all kinds of crafting things that I do and gardening and photography and music and all that kind of stuff. Um, you can find me on Instagram at hashtag Erndales and more. I have a Facebook page, Erndales, as well as uh, a blog. And I'm going to put all these links below. And uh, my email is erndalesandmore1 at gmail.com. So I'm going to put all of this below. So if you want to contact me anywhere else but here, uh, please be free to do that. So yeah, like I said, I'm here in the living room today because I have been really messing up my studio, but that's a good thing because that means that I've been working. Um, I have not had any progress on the eyes, really. I just noticed the, all the, the curtain of black pepper that I was telling you about last video. I notice it when I'm looking outside and there's a white reflection off the snow or something. If it's a bright room or, or like right here, right now, I don't see the the pepper. But if I go outside or if I look outside, oh, it's I'm looking for, through a fog. So I'm not driving. I have not been able to drive and I don't think I will be until this gets fixed. And so um, I had a couple of days where I just pretty much did nothing and I could not stand it. <laughs> I'm a do nothing, not a person who can just sit around and do nothing. So I started actually by necessity. I um, was doing the dishes one day and I don't know why this didn't come to my attention sooner, but you know, as crafters, we always have something else on our mind besides things that aren't quite important. <laughs> but my dishcloths were in a horrible, horrible state. I mean, I should have trashed these a long time ago. And I knit my own dishcloths because they last, number one, they last a long time. Number two, um, they they are so just the right size for me. And I make them in a couple of different sizes. And um, when I'm done with them, when they're, when they're no longer suitable for the kitchen, I put them in the rag bag and then my husband takes them and he uses them. And so they have a life, a long, long life. And even after that, sometimes if he doesn't get grease or anything on it, I cut them up little bit, bits and pieces and I can put them in my compost because they're cotton, they will break down. So it's a very sustainable practice. So I started, I thought, well, I got to do something. I can't just sit around and feel sorry for myself with these eyes. So I started to knit some dishcloths. And I've been knitting dishcloths. I have small ones. I have big ones. And I just use the corner to corner pattern. You know, you, you cast on four stitches and then you um, increase, knit two, increase one, all the way till you get 45 stitches across and then you start the decrease till you're back to four stitches. And that's, it's a fast, easy um, knit and makes really good, nice, strong, thick dishcloths, which I love. So that sort of got me back into my knitting mojo. And really, um, I needed something like this to kind of put me back into where I was before Christmas. I know I tend to, before Christmas, like the months before Christmas, October, November, and December, I tend to over knit and it's really hard on my arms and stuff. So I um, now am back and I haven't done any more on my mittens that I showed you. Um, where is it? This cable mitten. I got one done and I've cast on the other one. But I did want to show you the book because some of the some of you have asked me what book I was using and I I told you that it was um, an old book and it, it really is an old book. It's Beehive Gifts and Accessories. And actually, you know, this book has some really great patterns. This is the mittens here and there's actually a headband that goes with it. I, I don't know that I'll do that. If I make it, I might make it 
um, a little different, like make it as just a complete headband around, not with a, a button. But there's socks in here. This this is where I got my dicky um, pattern for too, the one that I did. Let me see if I can find it. So there's mittens. There's scarves. Really nice sock and slippers. I actually like these little socks here. And uh, some of these are for children and some are for adults. So that's really good. Um, it's always hard to find a child's sock pattern. There's balaclavas, there's nice little toques. So it's actually a good book, but what I was really excited about when I was looking through this book, for years I have, here's some more, here's the dicky that I made. And there's all kinds of little things, but for years I've been looking for what was used to be called um, Feather and Fan. My mom made an afghan years ago, I mean a long time ago, um, and she called it the Feather and Fan pattern, and I found it. It's in this book, and it is a really pretty pattern. It's knit. It's not crocheted, but it has got um, like a real Feather and Fan look to it. It's very lacy, even though it doesn't look lacy here, so I'm going to hang on to this book. I, it was one of my books, actually, that I was going to purge. And I've changed my mind. I'm keeping this one because it's got a lot of good stuff in it. So um, then I decided that I needed to do some more socks. I thought that um, I love doing socks. So it's not something that, you know, I push myself too hard to do. So I have these ones. They are uh, they're just a vanilla sock, but I'm doing shorty socks just for myself. And I'm using, I can't remember what this is called. It's its more of a DK weight. It's not, not really, they call it a sock yarn. I guess it's a DK sock yarn. And it's a Mary Maxim. I got it from Mary Maxim. They don't even sell it anymore. I can't remember. It was col color something or other. And I'm just using the pattern uh, from Mary Maxim. It's Sockies number 6257P. It's just a plain vanilla sock pattern. So I got, I cast those on and I'm already at the heel. I mean, this sockies take, you know, you, you basically just do your, your cuff and a couple of rows and then you're into your heel flap already, which is lovely. And then I also cast on, actually, I had a whole sock made with this already. Um, it's just a vanilla sock pattern. I use the uh, Super Simple Sock Pattern by Allison Sarnoff and I had I had finished a whole sock in this and I frogged the whole thing because I don't know what's wrong with this yarn. This is Croy um, yarn, sock yarn, and it is the colorway Sunset, Sunset Stripes, but for some reason it is turning out so thick and I, I've used a lot of Croy. That's sort of my go-to yarn for knitting for boots or for knitting for kids or for men, even for myself, if I'm gonna wear them in boots and stuff. These are durable, really durable socks, but this turned out so thick. And so I frogged it and I changed my needle size a bit and um, it's still not working out so great. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish them and use them as boot socks because um, they'll be good for that. And then I was watching a, another podcaster and she mentioned that she was doing the Let's Stay Home socks and they look so pretty. So I have cast these on. And this is the Let's Stay Home socks by Nancy Wheeler. And this is such a pretty knit. I just love this. And it's cables. Hey, look at this girl, the no cable girl. She's cabling like crazy, everything. Look at it, isn't that pretty? I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of blowing out a little bit, but um, yeah, it's it's lovely. And I'm using, again, a Croy, because that's what I have a lot of. 
This is um, Copper Colors. That's what it's called. So I I just I just started this this morning, and I think I'm just going to be knitting my head off with this pattern because I absolutely love it. It's just such a nice pattern to work on. So three pairs of socks, pair of mittens, and dishcloths. Um, and I think that's going to be it for the knitting for a little while because I have a whole bunch of other things that I'm doing as well. I had to stop for a minute. The, the clock just went off and it's loud and I thought I would let it do its thing before I continued. So next up is stitching. And I have been doing a lot of stitching actually. I have put the Year in the Woods fox that I showed you last time, or was it last time? I think it was. Um, I put that one on hold because that's pretty small and I was straining my eyes a little bit with doing that. Even though I want to finish it so badly, I had to put it aside for a little bit. And um, But I have been doing my stitching journal, my daily stitching journal, and this is where I'm at with it. Actually, down here, this part, oh dear, this here one is yesterday's. I didn't finish it yet. Um, but this has been so much fun. Seriously, I love this. Every day, I just sit down at the end of the day and I stitch this, the next square. And um, this is 24 days. I haven't done the 25th and I've got enough days to get me to the end of the month. So I'm going to be making a new one of these using the template that I made for February. I haven't finished doing all the outlining of all the days, but I'm going to do a closer walk around with you on this um, because I want to explain some of the... I added a few special days, like for instance, um, January 12th was my parents' would have been my parents' wedding anniversary, and they were married in 1942. So on January the 12th, I put January 12th, 1942, and a heart. Just little things like that. Um, my brother had his 64th birthday on the 21st, so I put Dean 64 today, and I made a little cake. So, you know, I'm trying to include on days that there is something that is memorable to me or meaningful to me, I'm I'm trying to add those little those little moments in there because it is a journal. And you know, if if that's the, what I'm thinking about that day, then that's what I'm going to stitch. So yeah, this is my January stitching journal, and I'm really enjoying this. And to help me, because you know it's been a long time. These are embroidered stitches, and I and I do the basics. You know the running stitch, the back stitch, the French knots and things, but I'm trying to, I want to really challenge myself to learn more stitches. So years ago, my husband and I were, oh, and when I'm doing this, I'll just tell you a little bit more. I'm not using any of my good flosses. I have my childhood, <laughs> This is gonna this is gonna age me right here this is my childhood embroidery box i think i got this when i was six or seven years old from an aunt and it's full of this kind of thing <laughs> and that's what i'm using actually i'm pulling i'm pulling colors from this ball of stuff and it's actually working out fine i thought i would have a lot of um knots and things i don't it, it's coming out pretty good so yeah this is what I'm using as well as um, this box. And in here, these are just odd threads that aren't DMC or any of the nicer threads, just cheapo threads, some stuff left over from projects and things like that. So this is all I'm using is all this thread that's been sitting around for years and years, never being touched. But isn't this cute? I love this. I absolutely love it. Anyway, that is the stitching journal. And 
what is what I was going to tell you about years ago, my husband and I were in um, Value Village, which is a secondhand shop here. And um, he, I, <laughs> I was buying, or I, I had my eye on a Singer treadle sewing machine that was for sale for $20 and it was in terrible shape. And I was kind of draped over this thing and I wasn't even looking at anything else because I wanted this sewing machine so much. And he comes up and says, I got a book for you. And it is the complete encyclopedia of stitchery. And it is an amazing book. It's got embroidery, crocheting, knitting, tatting, sewing, macrame. Um, what else has it got in here? I'm just flipping through it so fast. It, it's just, and the embroidery section is massive and there's all kinds of fancy stitches in here you know uh if i learn an eighth of them i'll be doing something so every once in a while i'll flip a page and i'll try a stitch so this has been really good and now i want to start really flipping some of these pages and really getting into some of these more challenging stitches that um, you see on crazy quilts and things like that. I have a piece of crazy quilting that was done by, um, well, it belonged to my aunt, but I don't think she did it. I think it was her mother that did it. And the stitching is just amazing. So, and they're all, they're all in this book. So that's one thing that I've been doing. And then I started this little stitch. It's just on 14 count Ada that I, uh, I think I tea dyed this. And it's, it's a pillow, it's a little pillow. It's called Spring Green Salt Box. Um, and it's it's going really fast. There's there's a little bit of stuff. I'm gonna show you a picture. I'll put the picture up right here for, for the Spring Green Salt Box. So that's what I've been doing for stitching. And um, actually this, this Spring Green Salt Box is a free pattern. It's by Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting on blogspot.com. I will put the link for it below. And uh, you can go ahead and, and grab this little sweet um, pattern. What attracted me to this was it's exactly the same color as my house. <laughs> and I thought, oh, look at that. I'm gonna do that one. I don't know yet if I'm gonna make it into a pillow or if I'm gonna frame it, I haven't decided, but um, it is a lovely little stitch. So there's one free pattern. There's another free pattern coming up today. So this one, I'll put the link below and um, go ahead and get yourself your floss out and make yourself a nice little pillow. Now, journal making. I'm following the title. If you notice, knitting, stitching, journal making. So I have been doing some journal making this week too, and I didn't actually get anything finished. Well, yes, I did, but that I can't show you till the next segment. So the, the journal that I was making for my friend, the gardener, I have made all the signatures for inside, and I'm just about now to, to put the binding on or to bind them into the book. And then I'm gonna cover this, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, decorating, but not a whole lot. This is uh, this is um, for her to journal in. It's not it's not a junk journal. It's it's she's gonna need it to write in. And then I was thinking because of what I did finish, I might make a little notebook to go inside, and I'll show you sort of how I'm gonna do that in in just a minute. And then I've covered another cover. I just used little pieces of, of book pages and I, I used some ink around the edges. And um, this is going to be a junk journal. I haven't done anything with the inside yet. So this is the one that I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm fin gonna finish this one this week for sure. And then I'm gonna get going on this one cause I have lots of plans for this one too. And then the other one, that I did is got to do with the next thing I'm gonna talk about. 
So remember I told you, um, I don't know if it was last time or the time before, about the traveling spindle. Well, it arrived yesterday. And here it is. So it comes in three parts. It's you take it apart, you can take it apart. So it's very easy to transport. You know, you can transport it in an envelope flat. It comes with the three parts and some roving. And this was started by Brittany of Crux Fibers. She is um, a wool dyer, spinner, knitter, everythinger um, from Whitehorse Yukon. And she started this traveling spindle idea. And the first person that got it from Brittany was Leanne of the Nitty Stew. She had it for um, almost a month. And then it went to Alice of Soxy Nana Alice. Uh, she's in Winnipeg and she, she had it for a while and tried it out. And uh, now I have it and I'm gonna keep it for a month or so and use it. And so it will be going to the next person, person unknown at this point, when I'm done with it. So if you are interested in trying out this little spindle, um, you can send me an email and let me know that you want to be put on the list and I will be picking a name, not now, I'll pick it um, probably in a few weeks of the next person. But my next journal has to do with this. So the spindle came yesterday and um, there was a piece of paper with it that has the information because there's a there's a thing on Instagram, uh, a hashtag the traveling spindle. So, you know, you're supposed to use the spindle, take pictures of it, um, mention it on on the on the Instagram thing. Anyway, and on the back, Brittany started a little journal. But I see the paper has already been ripped. And I thought, you know, if this if this if this little spindle goes around the world, and I hope it does, I think that would be so cool, it's going to need more than paper, and maybe paper wouldn't be the best thing. So, last night, I couldn't sleep, so I got up and I made the Traveling Spindles Journal. Simple little journal, just got some paper in it for people to write their name, the date they received it, and if they want to write a little note, that's fine. And um, I'm going to tuck this paper into the front of it so that it stays with it because um, I made a little tuck, little tuck spot here for it. And it's just a plain little journal, but I thought that would be really cute for traveling along with the spindle. So Brittany, I hope you don't mind if you're watching this, I hope you don't mind that I did this, but I just kind of thought it'd be something fun. And it's flat, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make a, you won't have to send a parcel, it'll still be able to go in an envelope and it's very light. So there you go. I did finish a journal and it's this one. But this is what I was meaning when I was saying that I would like to make some notebooks uh, or a notebook to go in my friend's gardening journal and I'm going to make it about half the size and if she wants to write little things in the notebook as well she can so yeah here we go one little journal done and the other thing I was thinking um, we here where I live we have uh, we are actually known as the maple syrup syrup capital of Manitoba and every year we have a Manitoba maple syrup festival in March or April, depending when the sap stops, right? starts rising, I guess. And they always have um, a vendor craft sale kind of thing. 
maker sale. And I, I haven't been in a sale for a few years, quite a few years actually. And I think I might try it. I think I might make some things, maybe some, some small journals and uh, maybe some of my artwork and I don't know what else, mug rugs. I, I don't know, I'll have to figure it out. But I'm thinking sort of along the lines of doing a few junk journals and things like that. And so I think I'm gonna start working on some, you know, and putting them aside and seeing how much I get, you know, like how much I can build up, how much inventory I can build up before I commit to this madness. I think it would be kind of fun. It's a lovely festival. It runs uh, two or three days over a weekend usually. And it's most of it, there's a lot of outdoor stuff. Like you can take a horse drawn, uh, you know, horse and wagon and go out to the sugar bush and you can tap for uh, syrup and you can, you know, fill a pail of syrup. You, they do um, making taffy on snow. There's always um, pancake breakfast all over town for the whole weekend. You can have pancakes with our syrup on there. Um, they have an old time country dance. They have a dinner usually. So there's, there's lots of entertainment outside and inside for this festival and the sale, the craft sale. So it's a really fun weekend at the end of winter, just before spring really gets going. So it's still chilly. You have to, you know, still warm up, but it's not freezing cold that you're, you know, uncomfortable. So I think it would be kind of fun to participate in that this year. At least I'm thinking about it. I don't know if I'm gonna do it. And so what have I not talked about? Let me see. Oh, I guess I've covered everything that I wanted to say today. So the other free pattern, um, that the first one is the, the little salt box um, stitch. The other one is the Let's Stay Home socks. That's a free pattern on Ravelry, and I'll leave the link for that below. If you want to try those socks out, um, they are really nice to do. I, I'm really enjoying that knit. So um, I guess that's about all I have for you today. And um, I have a few plans to do, well, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna concentrate on the socks that I'm working on and see, I, I really wanna knit a sweater for my husband, but um, I think I, I, I'm afraid that I'm gonna overdo, get myself into too much stuff and then I won't get anything finished. So I have to bring it all in, <laughs> which is not my style at all. So a couple of other things I was gonna mention is there's, um, Soxy Nana Alice has um, a make along on Instagram. It's called Soxy Scrappy Mel 2023. And I'll put the link to that as well. And there's also another one uh, called Whip Be Gone 2023. And I will put the link to that. So if you're interested in joining in, um, I think. Alice said that hers, the Soxy Scrappy Mel, is not just for socks or for knitting, it's for anything really. Um, so have go to, if you're on Instagram, check it out and see if um, it's something that you would like to partake. So my friends, thank you so much for sitting with me in my living room and thank you Chip for all your chatter back there. I hope that didn't bother you too much. Take care, everybody. Thank you so much for all the comments that I have received about my eyes and things like that. Your support really is lovely and very much appreciated. And if you like what you've seen on here, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And I will see you again next week. Take care, everybody. See you next week.